action. Hey, what's, what's up, up brother? brother? Are you in the metaverse over there? What's going on? That can't be real. <laughs> Dude, you never see me at the pool, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the metaverse pool. <laughs> Dude, seriously. <laughs> I, I'm loving this. These are all NFTs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it looks nice there, bro. I can't wait to see it. Yep. So, um, so guys, our Instagram, our My Investing Club Instagram has been down for like three days. Yeah. And now now it's finally up, thank God, for in time for Instagram Live. Man, these yep. trolls are good, man. You, you know how they impersonated us every single day, try to pretend to be us. Somehow they got Instagram to believe that they were the real real. It's account. crazy, bro. Instagram shut down the real Instagram account that we have and left only the scammers. So I'm sure they must have scammed a bunch of people in that period, but we finally got the IG back, and here we are now. And just, I mean, for the people that think we're fake, if we're fake, why are they scamming us? Why are they trying to pretend to be us, right? So I mean, it, thank God we got it so. back. Uh, we, we, uh, so it's going to be back right in time. I think there could be a couple of reasons. I want to talk about anything, but yeah, right now is the beginning of the Black Friday sale, right, Alex? Yeah, so let me kind of explain that real quick, guys. So what we did is this year for Black Friday, we're doing pretty much everything's 50% off. So the annual is 50% off. And if you're not ready for the annual yet, we have an educational bundle. The educational bundle is the accelerator, which, oh my God, uh, our members are watching it and they're finding consistency like pretty much right after watching it. And then we have the boot camp, which is the event where Bao and I traded live. So you're gonna be able to watch the accelerator, learn the setups, learn the strategies, and then you're gonna see it executed live while me and Bao trade it. So that's the education bundle, that's 50% off too. So what we did is everything is on myinvestingclub.com slash Black Friday. We have only 49 entries. And of the 49, there's only nine left. So after the nine gets sold, probably by today, there's going to be no more Black Friday sale. And the reason why we limited it to 49 only is because we're doing two giveaways. The first giveaway is you get to be in the raffle to win a free annual membership. And giveaway number two is you get to be in a raffle to win a one-on-one -on -one with me. So we did 49 entries only to make it easier for you guys to win. 40 of them got sold yesterday. There's nine left today. And it's probably going to get sold probably by the end of this, guy. So myinvestingclub.com slash Black Friday. And, yeah, I mean, try us out, man. Try us out. You know, they, uh, the ones here. they can all hit up Tosh if they have more questions. The number is on the website as well, guys. There's only yep. a few slots left, guys. There's only a few slots left. We yep. told you guys that. We told you guys. When did we tell you guys that monthly was going away? And yep. we, we, we did that. We, we told you that monthly was going away. We told yep. you that prices were, were being raised. Yep. So we, so we actually, the, the price that we had originally was very cheap. It was way too cheap. And we, our, our annual was cheaper than other people's quarterly. Exactly. Our, our lifetime, guys, is still cheaper than most people's annuals. Yep. Exactly, guys. So try it out, get it 50% off, and we'll see you guys in the room. I mean, today the watch list told us to short APVO at $11, and it went all the way down to $9. So that one trade, if executed properly, pre-planned on the watch list, could have paid for your membership. And that's every day, guys, every day. Great. So how? So is, is the lifetime 50% off too? Lifetime is not really, we're not really discounting it right now, but if you guys want case by case, text Tosh and I'll tell him to give the first five people a discount that I hit him up for lifetime. His number is 213-458-5997. So, so that's awesome, man. So let me, let me, uh, let me get this right. Hold on. I, I just... So, so let, let me summarize. Okay. Cause uh, I'm pretty slow right now. <laughs> um, I went out last night with my son to Universal. Um, so right now, there is only nine open slots for annuals. We started out with 49, Correct. and we sold a bunch of them yesterday because we actually went on live yesterday. I saw it, man. A bunch of people joined the room. Um, now we only have a few slots left for annual. But if, but if you don't make the annual, guys, and you're too late because you, you didn't see this on time and you're watching this because it's a tape recording, hit up Tosh. And yep. tell Tosh that you were working – and, and show that you are working and not just because you, you waited too long, okay? Because if, exactly, you, guys. if you go home, because we're going to post this later on today, right, Alex? And then, yep. So people, people come out from work. They're not going to be able to see this. If you miss 
the nine because it's probably gone already. So if 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 nine is gone and and you want in because you were working, text Tosh. Yeah, okay? and the giveaways are no brainers, man. I mean, if you you're gonna be in the raffle to either win a free annual or a free one on one with me. This is your opportunity, guys, to have a multi multi millionaire day trader help you and coach you with a one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, just for being able to have that opportunity is worth it in my opinion, but it is what it is. Yep, and so right now the lifetime is not discounted, but it, it, it may. So if you text Tosh, Tosh is always looking to help people around. So, yep. um, and there's also a webinar. We, there's a free webinar that we created too for those that are not ready. Yep, so if you guys are not ready yet, guys, we have a free webinar where you get to see some of my live trades this is for non-members. Members have access to this already. And that's going to be at myinvestingclub.co.co, not .com. Correct, guys. So once again, monthly is no longer available. We yep. switched to annual. And right now, guys, you got to get this deal because uh, it's going to go, the price is going to go way back up to 4000 bucks, man. $2,000 yep. for $2,000. And it includes uh, Accelerate, right? Yep. It includes, the annual includes everything in the educational bundle. Plus the webinars, the mentorship, the videos, everything. Dude, we used to, how much did we used to charge for the accelerator? That's a DVD that kind of like changed the whole industry. Yeah. So the accelerator itself, guys, is $1,000. So instead of getting the accelerator by itself, you'll get the annual membership plus the accelerator plus the boot camp plus the videos plus the webinar plus the watch list for $2,000. <laughs> the, the reason I love to talk about the accelerator because when we started, we saw people were selling DVDs for like three thousand dollars, right? Outdated yeah. crap for three thousand bucks. And me and Alex's mission was to eliminate all that bullshit from all these gurus, the guys that did not know what the fuck they're doing, creating these obsolete trading strategies. Yeah, outdated and, stuff. It's all outdated. They're still teaching crap. They're still selling crap that they created like ten years ago. And so our goal was to basically give away cheaply as possible yeah. these trading DVD training. Which, and so we basically gave it away as long as you bought the annual, right? So. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, guys, try it out. Nine spaces left. Myinvestingclub.com slash Black Friday. And, Val, you fucking murdered APVO today, bro. So I want to hear you talk about that, too. All right, guys. This is, this is a big lesson for you guys, okay? Later, so guys. Everyone's, all right, guys. This is, you got, you're going to be in it for real treat, man. So I, I've been trading for a long time, guys. And people, the new traders are always excited about these terms I've never heard of before, like, like Turkey Week. What the hell is a Turkey Week? So historically, the market has been on fire, running big time during during Turkey Week, which is Thanksgiving Week. USA has a uh, – on Thursday, the markets are closed for USA holiday Thanksgiving, okay? It's not a worldwide holiday, obviously. Canada has their own Thanksgiving. But ours is on this Thursday. And so historically, there's been crazy low floors that have been running all over the place. Yesterday, you saw LGVN. LGVN, you saw go from $10 – Ten fucking dollars, like forty bucks, almost after hours, almost fucking insane. And so, what happened today was this, guys. Everyone expected another turkey play, and what happens is when everybody expects the same thing, the reverse happens. So this is how I trade these these periods, okay, of time. So next, so after Turkey Week, it's going to be a Santa Claus rally, okay? They have all these terms. They're doing Santa. So I'm going to start with the Turkey Week first. Turkey Week historically, if you look it up, the markets go up. But today, yesterday, the market tanked, right? Today, the market tanked big time. And so what happens is this. Nothing is 100% foolproof, guys. Nothing. 90% of the time, it will go crazy. Because that's historic. That's what happens. But 10% of the time, it won't. But so during those 10% of the time, you have to play. You have to have risk management. So the way I make money, guys, is this, guys. I'm telling you, man. You can do two things. You can, if you're more aggressive, play for the big risk reward. So risk a thousand to make ten thousand. Because if one of these pops, like you see LGVN go from ten dollars to forty bucks, you will become rich, right? But how often does that fucking happen? That was one stock yesterday out of ten stocks. You could have guessed every stock wrong. LVGN ran at what, like noon, one PM? It's very unexpected. And when it starts going up, how can you chase something so high? So People that got rich off of these turkey plays is because they got lucky. They didn't know it was going to turkey play. If you go out and guess a turkey play, chances are you're never going to find it. Today, you thought APVO was a turkey play. 
and all it did was tank. Tank, tank. So APVO, let me review that play. That play was very, very strange. I actually lost on it. I actually lost on that on a long because I looked at that stock, 5 million float. Easy to borrow. Tons of shorts in it. SSR, every check mark was checked up the up the ass to to be a hot chick of the play, avoid a short. That I thought would be the next turkey play, just like LVGN. And what it did, it tanked all the way fucking down. That's because everybody expected that to be the turkey play. And so I actually lost on it. Initially in pre-market, I was trying to to risk maybe a few thousand bucks to make fucking twenty thousand dollars. It did not happen. But once again, I had risk management. For that, for, because you know what I mean? I trade every day the same. Every day to me is a turkey week fucking crap play. Because you know what? You never know when one stock will blow you up. So I'm not one of those guys that are, 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 are gamblers. So I, I'll give you an example. So they, I went to Las Vegas recently, just the other day for the weekend, and then I barely gambled, dude. The first, this is the first time I ever went to the high limit ta- uh, room. High limit. I didn't know what the fuck was. I went in there, and it was a $100 bet. And hundred dollars is like 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 my less than my locate fees, right? So these guys thought I was a poor guy walking into high limit. But then when I sat down, they started to realize, you know, this guy's not poor, you know. Uh, I was just playing for fun, and so so for me, I don't like to gamble. I like a sure thing. I, I when I gamble, it's because of the entertainment. So today's Turkey Week, I played your Turkey Week exactly the same. I'm just here to do whatever I fucking do. And all I do is I'm going to channel trade uh, a stock. I'm going to, I told the guys, I'm only going to short broken stocks and low hanging fruit. So that's exactly what I did. Check my, my um, charts on Twitter and you'll see. I did the exact same thing I always did. But the difference I changed, the difference what I did today is the fact that, man, APVO, you saw it teleport, dollar, two dollars, but then it always went back down. If I had sized up, like a regular play, I would die. So why does actually size down? During two, three weeks, we, Alice and I talked about this, man. You never know. These things fucking go crazy. They can range a lot more. But doesn't mean I'm going to change the way I trade. Doesn't mean all of a sudden I'm going to go long. I did go long. I was like, fuck, I was, because yesterday because LVGN went up so much, that gave me fucking FOMO. I was like, oh, my God. Because yesterday I went to Universal Studios. I missed the whole play. And so I'm like, today I'm going to nail a turkey play. And what I did when I come into the market thinking biasly, I'm going to nail a long, I lost on the long. So I went back to my bread and butter, APVO tank, and I started shorting every pot, and it worked out. And I survived is because I sized down. So when these rallies come, when there are times where 90% of the time that stock rolls up in a crazy manner, and you're a short bias seller, you size down. You still keep the same risk parameters, but you size the fuck down. But you don't, because you can get clipped like this. The reverse. When the edge is in your favor as a long buy trader, you can size up a little bit. So yesterday, LVGN, if you size up a little bit, you'll be okay. Today, if you size up a little bit on APVO, you die. But, but, you have your risk, you draw your lines, you do all the things. And that is the risk reward you take. So, so today, I lost money on the long play, and I'm okay with it. I stopped out. I lost a few thousand bucks, but I made many more times over on the short side. So I took a little risk knowing that, hey, if it paid off, I will be greatly paid off. But it doesn't mean I throw caution to the wind. I go all in. None of that stuff. Still keep the same risk parameters. So how do I trade Turkey Week? I trade Turkey Week exactly the same way as I trade every single day, guys. The only difference is, you know what, man? I may be looking for more long opportunities. And it didn't work out today. Simple as that. Did not work out. I went back to my bread and butter. I sized down, and it's okay. I sized down on APVO. I did great. And you know what? And that's all I can do. So Alex always says, you know, certain, certain times of the year, you just want to survive. Okay? One of the times is now. Turkey play, you want to survive. Last year, man, I, I think I got blown away a few trades, too, trying to short a turkey play. So last year, everything went up, guys. Low floaters, everything went up. This year, Eh, we'll see. Tomorrow is still another day. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday. Um, Thursday, the markets are closed because of Thanksgiving. And Friday is a half day. So let's see what happens, guys. The fat ass and bow, the fat ass and lazy eye trader. I don't know what that means. Is that a compliment? <laughs>
Uh, Rig my nuts. Uh, we, I love these trolls, guys. Who are, let me let me bring on the, all these trolls. The best thing to do is you bring on these trolls, and they just pussy out. <laughs> but anyways, um, any questions, guys? I trade Turkey play the same. The next one's gonna be the Sound Cause Rally. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, guys. Keep to doing what you do best. And I'm telling you right now, unless you're a pro, Alex is a pro. I think I'm above average. So I took a little chance on something I normally wouldn't do. Same thing with Alex did. He went long on IPC, which he normally would not do. But notice how small he lost. He only lost $4,000. That's like a little paper cut for him, right? So notice he didn't go all in and lose fifty hundred thousand dollars $100,000 like some people. He just played his normal hand. But you know what, man? He went long. He didn't work out. He lost four grand. That's like that's like fucking a day or less for him. So that's a paper cut, guys. So that's what you do. You do the same fucking shit you always fucking do, guys. Because that's what you're used to. Do not deviate from your process just because some event comes. Because you never know what the event does. If everybody thinking crazy crack week comes, it does the opposite. Last year, people didn't think crazy crack week comes. And so it comes. LGVN yesterday. No one even had an idea of go out. But Alex, and, and we talked about this, about turkey play. So yesterday was the turkey play, guys. Because of the fact yesterday was the turkey play, today everything's, everybody's trying to, it's a sympathy, right? So what happens when, when the sympathy goes down, uh, when the main head of the snake goes down? So we should have known. Let's take a look at the hindsight. The hindsight is this. In order to create a rally and sustain a rally, the head of the snake needs to stay up. If you take a notice, if you take a, uh, if you realize every single big rally, there's a head of the snake that controls every other sympathy play. That head of the snake, like AMC, GME, needs to be up in order for all the other stocks to stay up. But LGVN was the head of the snake yesterday. And it tanked. That means it did not work, guys. So everything else, everything else, you've got to be careful. That LGVN failed. ISPC then failed. APVO failed. So therefore, who is left as the head of the snake? KTTA. I didn't even trade that stock. There was, it was, there was no locates on it. I, um, this core chat rooms were pumping it, were pumping it. All these other guys were pumping it. And it was a totally long one side because it's a low flow trap short thing. Because what happened, enough to buy. So the, 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 or the natural bidders, they're always fighting to cover. And that's why I thought APVO might have been it. Easy, but it did not work out. And it's completely fine. I'm not going all in. You know, I lost like 4,500 bucks on it. But that's fine. I made it all back and a lot more. So the key is I took a chance. It did not work out. But based upon my risk management, like I always do, I was okay. And look at Alex. He lost, but he lost very little. To me, that's that's like a low KT for him, right? So um, any questions, guys? So how do you trade tomorrow? I trade tomorrow the exact same way, guys. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to let all of these guys think that every stock is a turkey crack play. And I'm just going to wait for my lines, wait for my outer lines, wait for my resistance to short. That's exactly what you could do. These turkey plays, just like every other big plays, come and you recognize them usually only in hindsight, only after it happens. When we look back LGBN yesterday, we're like, holy shit, that was a turkey play. But at that time, we didn't know. People are telling everybody, you're stupid to go long at $17. You're stupid to go long at $20. you are stupid to go long at $28. And then hit $38. And then at $38, everyone's like, oh, shit, it's going to go to $100. I hear so many people wishing it was – that thing is going to go to $100. So at $38, they start piling in for $100. They're piling in for $50. Bucks. And then what happens? Boom, it created the same thing today. It created again today. And everyone's trying to load up for the bounce. It did not happen. So the moral of the story, guys, is – you don't fucking know what the turkey play. It's only after the fucking fact. But you know what I know? I know that my line, when the resistance comes, when the stock is broken, I'm going to fucking short the shit out of that shit when it bounces. A-P-V-O, take a look of my charts on Twitter. The moment it broke, became a broken stock, under VWAP, heavily under VWAP, I knew 
that that was my fucking turkey play. My turkey play is on the short side. I'm shorting every single pop of APVO. Hey, what's APVO right now, guys? What's the price? APVO. But, but you see what happens, guys? I really don't know what is a turkey play. You don't even know what the Santa Claus rally is until it happens. And when it happens, it's fucking too late. And so what happens is this. When it happens, guys, what's the APVO? APVO. Whoa. Oh, shit. I got to run back. <laughs> I forgot what it was before. But, uh, but you know what's guys? No one knows what it is until it happens, guys. So the way you trade is you trade the sympathies. That's the best way to trade. All these stocks, guys, is to trade the sympathies. APVO. So now the sympathy is going to come, guys. All right, guys, I'm going to take off because I'm going to run back. <laughs> I'll see you guys.